invited here. And welcome everybody. Really glad to have you here. And especially for such a cool occasion, which is uh, essentially the first chicken-ins since, uh, what, four months or something like that. Uh, yeah, we'll have, we can have a look at this right now, actually. Um, which one is the best one for this? Yeah. Uh, let me find it. Oh, yeah, it's this one. So if you check on the chicken bones dashboard, uh, we have quite a several on June, but I shared one on um, on the uh, community call text channel. Uh, you can see this uh, a chart like the ACE or something, outgoing bond age. It kind of shows you the bonds uh, that are claimed over time, the size, and whether they were claimed in profit or not, <laughs> which is already an interesting thing. We'll, we'll dive into it. But remember that chicken bonds protect your principal. So people claiming unprofitably are, are literally deciding to burn money for some reason uh, because they can redeem to the principal, essentially to the USD they put in, and, and they would have gotten more money. But what we see on that chart is uh, a lot of green dots at first, obviously, when the chicken bonds was in a in an expensive growth phase, so from November to January, um, and and uh, there was then a bit of a <laughs> desert phase, let's say, for a few months, where it wasn't profitable anymore uh, to chicken in for uh, several reasons, and so uh, mostly what happened is nobody chickened in, which makes the most sense, of course. You wouldn't claim something. Not at profit, uh, but now recently, uh, for, for several elements that we'll, we'll cover tonight, we've been seeing uh, green dots again, meaning essentially profitable chicken ins. People who claim a bond uh, was more than the, the LUSD they put in, and so uh, green dots is good. <laughs> green dot means also big USD supply increasing, permanent bucket increasing, uh, all those good things together. <laughs> So yeah, um, so we figured we'll uh, take the chance tonight to kind of go over um, yeah what happened over the last few months. Maybe also start with uh, 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 um, a chicken bone recap because some of you asked before that like uh, maybe two five minutes just what what are those chickens? What do they do? Um, and then yeah, we have quite a few guests. Uh, some already there. Thank you for joining. Uh, I see Dakota from from Bunny. And, and uh, yeah, Nicola from DeFi Saver. Oh, dang, even Robert is here. Okay, you guys are... Hi, Aaron. <laughs> so, yeah, the idea is all, all, all those cool dudes are involved one way or another with the chicken bonds. Uh, and so we'll give uh, uh, everyone who wants to join a kind of chance to, to discuss a bit uh, the, the area, <laughs> uh, if you're done with it. So, yeah, welcome, everybody. Um, I guess we can get started. I don't know. Sam, feel free to kind of uh, direct me a little bit if I go if I go over drive. <laughs> yeah, no, I think uh, what what would be a great start, Brees, is maybe you can start with a, a history of chicken bonds, what BUSD is, and how it all started, just so that sets the stage. Yeah, I was about to, to cover like history, but I just wanted to go back to the very beginning of... Uh, uh, hey, what are those chicken bones and what do they do? A quick story. Uh, I try to not be redundant for those who already know. But essentially for me, chicken bones is, is a story with two perspectives. Uh, on, on one side, you have a project with some needs uh, in terms of liquidity. And on the other side, you have token holders of that project with a long, mid to long term perspective looking to, to earn yield on that token. That's kind of like the base scenario of chicken bonds. And, and the elegance of chicken bonds is it kind of matches the two population, if I may, um, in a way that is uh, pretty much win-win in my perspective. And so the way it works for LUSD chicken bonds so, uh, that are kind of very specific to our needs is that uh, it provides LUSD holders that are in a mid to long term perspective. So you will need maybe two months, maybe a bit more, depending on what you do. But it's not like, you know, a few days to, to harness chicken bonds uh, with profit as an LUSD holder. But it, you, you can essentially make an increased return compared to uh, using just regular stability pool or other sources of yield on LUSD. So that's for the, uh, the, the users. Like, why would they come in? But uh, on the other side, uh, you know, there is no free lunch. And so the whole protocol is designed to uh, achieve some goals that are essentially um, synergetic to the long term of liquidity. And those goals are pretty simple, capture, develop and sustain liquidity for LUSD. 
And so uh, this is what the chicken bonds do in the project perspective. It helps to uh, grow and capture a various way about $3.5 million worth of liquidity on LUSD3 CRV that is currently and out of a 16 million TVL. So that's very efficient uh, overall as a system. Um, and yeah, the way it works, uh, let's go into the basics so everybody is on the same page and then we can we can have some chicken fun. Uh, let me let me try get a, a quick chart from um, we have on the blog that is super super easy. But the way it works is um, the core infrastructure of chicken bond is built around three buckets that uh, um, fulfill different functions with this system. <clears throat> Buckets are like um, essentially accounting tool. They are a way to track the values deposits. Um, and yeah, here is the mother chart. Uh, if you got this, you're a pro chicken. Um, so I'll, I'll walk you through it, don't worry, and give you also the link to the blog post if you want to dive later. But so yeah, the very basis of uh, BLUSD, so the token outputted by the chicken bonds, um, is that it provides an amplified and auto-compounded yield on LUSD while being redeemable for LUSD. And always keep in mind that LUSD itself is redeemable for ETH. So that means essentially BLUSD can be redeemed with two hops to ETH without using any decentralized exchanges. We're talking just hitting the chicken bonds contract, redeem my BLUSD, you get LUSD, and then hitting liquidity unstoppable contract and, 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 you know, getting ease from your LUSD. So that's a very interesting property uh, for, for, for uh, potential collateral. But yeah, we'll, we'll dive the collateral side later. So in terms of those buckets, and, and that's like pretty much the main thing to get, is those three buckets fulfill different function. But let's start with the easiest to understand, I guess, which is the reserve. The reserve is very straightforward. It's what's backing B LUSD that boosted LUSD token, the LUSD uh, earning auto-compounded amplified yield. So, uh, yeah, when people chicken in, a large part of the assets are sent there. Uh, the pending bucket is essentially kind of the, the uh, gateway to uh, BLUSD. So when you create a bond, um, you you obtain this egg NFT, and you have a, a position that essentially starts accruing BLUSD over time. Uh, when you're in that state, you at, you have two options at all time that we call chicken in and chicken out, cancel or claim the bond essentially. So canceling the bond is simply getting your LUSD back and claiming the bond is uh, claiming the corresponding amount of PLUSD while foregoing the LUSD to the system. Um, uh, yeah, the dashboard link, I think I put it above, you have one right above the cade. Um, so, uh, oh, sorry. So for the, the sorry, the pending bucket, uh, it's, it's essentially uh, the, the principle here is that since the user can chicken out at any time, he can cancel his bond, then the system might be able to pay back his whole bond at face value. So uh, pending bucket is pretty straightforward. The assets are kind of kept separate, farming without impermanent loss and redirecting their yield to the reserve. So, you know, they fulfill their function perfectly. Everybody in pending can redeem, can, sorry, can sell the, the bond and they will get the full LUSD back without issue. But meanwhile, they, they, they still fulfill a role within the system. Now, what's more interesting, I guess, is the in interaction between those reserve and permanent bucket, because this is really where the long-term twist of uh, chicken bonds come to play, and also its function as um, a way to capture direct liquidity where the projects need needs it. Um, and so uh, the way it works is uh, when a user claim a bond, his underlying LUSD are split between uh, reserve and permanent. And essentially, enough goes in reserve to maintain the current premium BLUSD has over LUSD. So right now, um, the full price of BLUSD is about 114. That's the price you can redeem BLUSD at interacting with the contract. Market price is a bit higher, about 119. Um, we'll go... I guess, in the reasons of why later. Um, but yeah, so the split is operated between uh, reserve and permanent. And so that means that essentially with every BLUSD outputted, 
the permanent yield amplification of the system goes up also proportionally. So you kind of have a, a natural uh, long-term uh, interest built in through this mechanism. And, uh, and you know, yet again, to be explicit, this is also one of the biggest drivers of the liquidity captured by the system, because currently on LUSD chicken bonds, the permanent bucket is about 1 million LUSD, and those are supplied to the curve pool, helping um, develop the liquidity and sustain the peg. That is a mouthful. <laughs> And I'm a bit sick, I'm sorry. <laughs> but I hope you got uh, at least the key part of it. Uh, um, we can probably share in the chat uh, some of the community calls we did earlier where we really spent like hour long conversations diving the mechanism, uh, if you want more uh, refreshers. But uh, I think for tonight, we should really uh, harness our pretty cool guest list and try to discuss uh, what has been up with uh, PLUSD more recently. Yeah, amazing. Sam is, is feeding you. I think the perfect one to to dive. There was one with Barry Fried also. That was really cool. Uh, I don't know if it's just that one. Um, yeah. So um, tu -tu -tum. let's go into some chicken history from here, I guess, and then we can we can uh, we can hand it over to to the guests. What do you think, Sam? Yeah, I think that's a great idea. Um, let's do it. All right. It's so I'll, I'll be more gentle with this part, so it's not turning into a lecture, I promise. Um, but yeah, there were, uh, the launch of, of Chicken Bonds was pretty interesting because it was uh, a phase launch in terms of the mechanism of the system. Um, so not all, uh, so all the code was, of course, you know, shipped at once and imitable, as we do at Liquidity, but uh, not all the components were active from day one, essentially. Uh, and this allowed the system to kind of progressively mature into um, it, it's, uh, its, its stage. And uh, this is kind of what we call the bootstrap period. Um, and so there were um, uh, three main uh, moments, essentially, uh, for the, uh, the, 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 the chicken bonds. Is at first, when they were launched, uh, the only thing you could do was to create a bond. And, and people were kind of waiting for a few days. But, you know, this is how the system goes. You need to, you actually be LUSD over time. So, of course, if you bond uh, the next day, uh, well, you have some more BLUSD, but not enough yet for it to be exciting to check it in. So uh, there was this bit of a, a progressive phase for the first 14 days. And also we, a, we added an extra protection because we kind of know the apes. And so the protection was that you couldn't chicken in for the first 14 days, essentially. Because we were kind of worried that an ape wouldn't understand. And, you know, chicken in a massive bond for a pretty small amount of BLUSD if the bond is like a day old. Um, so, yeah, that was a bit of an extra safeguard to make sure um, <laughs> nobody was, was harming itself, essentially. Um, so, yeah, that was the first phase. And then after that, after that uh, uh, bootstrap period, uh, once the first chicken in happened, essentially, chicken in became an option for everybody. And that started to kickstart the system. Because um, when a user chicken in, uh, can I tell you a short story earlier of the split between permanent and, and a reserve bucket, there is a third thing happening, which is 3% um, of the LUSD amount is sent for incentives on the curve pool. And in the early days of the chicken bond, uh, you can imagine it was quite explosive because the curve pool was close to non-existent and uh, there were a lot of chicken ins essentially. <laughs> so a lot of incentives sent there and, and stream, stream, uh, so the, the, the contract distributes it over a week. But you know, there was a, a bit of a buffering effect but it led to a, a bit of, let's call it for what it is, serious apery where essentially people were trying to claim bonds potentially a bit sooner than what they should have in terms of pure uh, profitability, but with the perspective of trying to really score early into that pool to kind of make up for it with those sweet years. So, uh, yeah, it was a game, uh, game of um, balancing greed, <laughs> essentially, uh, in, in those early days. But it was pretty interesting as a, a social dynamics to, um, to see uh, unfold. And then there, were, uh, there was a, the third and last component of the protocol, which is uh, the redemption um, of BLUSD 
which was enabled a, a bit further later, so 45 days after launch, essentially, per, per the code. Um, the, the vision here was just to make sure that redemptions are uh, draining the system of LUSD. It's, it's a backing mechanism, a, a kind of last resort mechanism. So uh, the, the perspective was to give enough room for the system to grow before uh, this was activated. Um, and, and, and yeah. So yeah, it was pretty fun those early days. We saw quite a few things. Uh, you can look on, on the NFT trading platforms too. There were like some crazy stuff happening. So we just found out recently that someone bought a chicken in NFT for 10 ETH. So meaning one of you chats sold a chicken in NFT for 10 ETH. I don't know who that is, but congrats to you, I guess. Um, yeah. And cool question, decayed on the chicken seam. Uh, that is actually, uh, uh, I don't know if you are wrong, Robert, but that's actually kind of your idea. Uh, I will try to do it justice. Um, but yeah, uh, when I joined Liquity, uh, it's around six months before Chicken Bonds uh, last year, um, the product was pretty well developed already. And like the guys had the infrastructure figured out, let's not lie. But uh, in terms of marketing and how we got this to market, it wasn't so clear yet. And, and, and there was indeed a big hesitation regarding this uh, chicken seam at first, uh, because we weren't sure it would be well received by the users. And um, also we were worried it would add confusion to the product. Um, but yeah, essentially it came from this idea of uh, the characteristic of the product, you know, so the fact that the bond is uh, principal protected uh, Robert in the development used to call that a, a hess cap patch like like for the chicken and uh, also of course the um, you know the whole idea of you create a bond and then you have to wait quite a while for it to become mature essentially we thought it fitted quite well the intuitive logic you know I give you an egg you cannot understand that it's not gonna happen tomorrow you know like you have to like be nice with that egg for a little while and then you might see something coming out of it so we thought it was a nice way of um, kind of expliciting the app interaction and um, we went pretty far with it because there is a whole NFT component of chicken bond I didn't really cover uh, as of yet uh, but essentially when you uh, when you create a bond uh, and then when you interact with it through chickens in and chicken out, uh, you have uh, an, an NFT that evolves and uh, uh, initially represents your bond and then become just more of a, picture it like a bit of a chicken bond pull up, I would say, you know, uh, for the chicken in and chicken out NFT, more of a souvenir of your experience with the chicken bonds. But we added some cool, uh, some cool logic to it in terms of rarity and things like that. And essentially, um, the bigger your bond, the more of a liquid chat you have been, the coolest your NFTs will be. Uh, and so, uh, yeah, that, that dynamic is also uh, quite cool. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. I could go for hours on chicken history, but I, I want. I would love to uh, to give up the mic a little bit. So I guess we could start with uh, <laughs> maybe uh, kind of what what kind of triggered a bit of uh, the recent excitement, uh, and and that is uh, something uh, really interesting, which is a kind of a use case we envisioned a while ago for BLUSD. But that took forever to finally find its home, essentially. I would describe it as, uh, as that. And it is, it is the usage of, of PLUSD as a, a collateral. Um, and so, yeah, uh, in the recent weeks, uh, as uh, quite of you might have known or noticed, uh, there is a, a liquidity-friendly liquidity fork <laughs> that launched called Gravita. And we have tonight uh, Rhett with us, uh, the founder. Uh, and, and one of the cool things with Gravita is they accept PLUSD as collateral. Uh, and so that was like one of the one uh, first, first, yeah, uh, large scale usage of, of PLUSD as collateral. Uh, the parameters are pretty interesting there too, because you get 99% LTV for a 0.5% interest rate. Uh, and yeah, and uh, the, the last thing, and, and to be improved, I guess we can be discussing about it is uh, for, for kind of, implementation uh, practicality, let's say at launch, uh, right now they're using a price of one LUSD per BLUSD. 
Uh, but yeah, the vision is to move forward using the full price uh, of BUSD as a price source, which will enable uh, a more accurate leverage, essentially. So, Red, are, are you around? I sure am. Hey, can you hear me? Hey, uh, yes, we hear you loud and clear. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, pre appreciate the introduction. And yeah, totally recognize that the $1 uh, price really understates. So the 99% LTV is really, what is it, like uh, less than 80 or something or around there. I, I haven't done the math recently. But, um, mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, that needs to change for sure. Um, and, you know, and part of the uh, reason why we left that in place at first is we uh, we wanted to um, as Gravita is new and needs to grow it kind of a, um, you know, in a, in a kind of a safe way, we didn't want to put too much um, cell pressure on Gry when the system is brand new. Um, but, uh, but yeah, we will definitely be moving toward that. Um, I've been a big fan of liquidity for a long time. Um, uh, I think probably most people here know that already. Um, and we also, as we started building this, um, as we forked liquidity and love um, the you know unstoppable stable coin, uh, we're looking for lots of ways to be you know co beneficial to liquidity as we as we launch. And um, I think that BLUSD collateral is a very obvious one. For one, given how resilient LUSD is, and that BLUSD is you know baking in yield from a ultra resilient source, um, I just consider it you know, one of the safest possible collateral types that we could offer, which is why we offer it with um, zero liquidation risk. Um, but secondly, as someone who has followed chicken bonds for a while and, um, and, and you know, did some early chicken bonding and things, um, we thought, hey, you know, we might be able to uh, benefit the chicken bond system by basically giving some upward price pressure to BLUSD, where if we can get um, BLUSD into a healthier price range, then then the whole system becomes more compelling to participate in again. So um, those are kind of like some of the motivations there, and um, and yeah, we're we're super excited to to be supporting BLUSD. You know, I recognize some of you in this call, um, DF, who has given a lot of really good um, thoughts in the Gravita Discord about ways we could expand support of BLUSD faster. You know, our goal is to support it in the fastest way we can, um, as you know, as, as fast as um, Gravita can kind of handle it, um, and in a way that's healthy to um, to the chicken bond um, system as well. So, um, I can I can just pause there, a little um, high level overview of how we are thinking about it. Yeah, it's a pretty amazing uh, overview. Thank you. Uh, and yeah, I mean that's that's a, a good a good place to transition to I guess on on this uh, this discussion about indeed um, um, kind of make, making sure um, uh, you know of course so right now there is synergy I think it's quite obvious everybody kind of looking at uh, LUSD chicken bonds uh, dashboard that we shared above um, you look at the chart and and you can. I don't need to tell you when Gravita launched. <laughs> Essentially, you will know. Um, so so we can see the impact. Another question is, uh, of course, to make sure that we don't go like degenerates and end up with 95% of the BLUSD supply in Gravita, because that would be, a, I don't know, that would probably not be an ideal situation. Uh, so uh, lucky for us, uh, and, and I guess it's also best for Gravita's design, they do have uh, caps, uh, so minting caps per uh, assets, and, and they're being uh, pretty conservative with the caps at launch. So if I'm not mistaken, BLUSD launched with uh, 1 million cry cap and, and was raised once and it's now at like 2 million and filmed. Something like that? Uh, yeah, al almost right on, yeah. It, uh, the initial mint cap was 1.5 mil and then we oh. raised it to 2 mil. And um, we were pleasantly surprised when we raised the cap that um, extra half a mil mint cap was filled in Dante would probably, Fornax, who's on the chat, would probably know better, but it was within, you know, somewhere between like five and 15 minutes. So definitely high demand there. We love that. We love, you know, uh, those things. But, um, and then, yeah, to, to Barisa's point, uh, we want to, you know, uh, manage our mint caps in a way that is, you know, A, safe for our system 
and especially as we're small and growing, that we don't create a lot of excessive early cell pressure on gry. But secondly, we want to do it in a way that is healthy for chicken bones. So for instance, it seems at present um, that, uh, you know, for instance, if we had mint caps so high that of the uh, $16 million of, of chicken bonds or of BIUSD out there, if we captured almost all of it, that that might cause some weird things in the marketplace. So we'll probably, you know, um, have terminal mint caps at, you know, um, some percentage of the total supply of, of BIUSD. Now, to some extent, I think that would be self-correcting because really if, if almost all the BLUSD came into our system, that would mean that that curve pool would get emptied out and then the curve pool would become extremely profitable. And so then some would probably exit our system and go back in there. Um, but again, we're, we're trying to do things in a way that is just, um, uh, you know, just healthy for both systems, if that makes sense. And, and we'll be um you know talking regularly with the the liquidity team about you know get get their view on what's healthy as well yeah pretty pretty <laughs> pretty cool approach you have here and uh i guess yeah for everybody another thing we kind of forgot is uh collateral wise gravita is looking for uh essentially immutable tokens and lsds and so uh, it means, you know, in terms of the tokens that can be harnessed, we have quite a few options on top of uh, potentially BLUSD. Uh, and things, you know, like uh, LUSD related LPs could be considered uh, as long as they do not involve a sensor or token. So we were for now discussing in theory, because of course, I guess that would probably need to be approved also by governance if you get there, or I don't know. But for instance, considering uh, consider a BLUSD, LUSD Uniswap V3 LP, that's two unstoppable stable coins together, could be a potentially interesting collateral. And on, on, on the um, discussions we're having, it will also help address the issue of uh, uh, scaling uh, chicken bonds and BLUSD as essentially uh, Gravita is harnessing it more. But we're kind of already seeing it because, you know, we have chicken ins, so it means we have more BLUSD since uh, since uh, essentially the leverage was enabled. Yeah, yeah. So a couple of thoughts on that. Uh, we don't support LP collateral yet, but we plan to. And, um, and to, to uh, your point, Brace, we have a strong commitment to keep out the censorable stables from our collateral base. Um, uh, but uh, um, LUSD obviously is not censorable. And so apart from the uh, liquid stake tokens, um, supporting LS LUSD related collateral is really, uh, we think really high value add both to us actually and, and to liquidity. So uh, the LUSD, LUSD LP would be a great um, future collateral type for us to support. Another future collateral type uh, that we think is really interesting are things like ETH LUSD LP or even like LS, you know, liquid stake token LUSD LP. So if you had RE through SD ETH paired up to LUSD, you know, it, it meets the, the need for us to keep the censorable stables out of our collateral base. But it also, I think these LP tokens of, of ETH and ETH related assets paired up to LUSD, I personally think for people who want volatility dampened exposure to ETH, it's pretty attractive. Um, cause you get, you know, ETH LUSD is basically volatility dampened ETH with some baked in transaction, um, fees, um, some baked in yield. And then obviously you have a, an additional layer of baked in yield if it's, if it's a liquid state token paired up to LUSD. So those are some other ways that we, um, you know, uh, think we could support, um, LUSD related collateral in the future. Um, and who knows, maybe as chicken bonds grows, the BLUSD becomes something that gets LP'd up to some of these other things rather than just um, LUSD. But yeah, that that Uniswap pool, that bunny pool that launched, um, we love that one. And being able to support that in the future would be amazing. Awesome, yeah. So yeah, uh, for those who missed it, there is a, a, a bunny pool. Uh, just just went through governance today to get its coach, PLUSD, LUSD pool, uh, five BPS with a pretty dense concentration on, on Uniswap V3. And, and that would help uh, increase uh, BLUSD liquidity to, to help facilitate more usage of it, uh, potentially as collateral too. Um, 
Yeah, when I was organizing this call, I'm sorry, I forgot his name. If you're wrong, please don't hate me. But there was someone kind of a, a bit, I guess, a bit in the future <laughs> that asked me to ask you about chicken gray. <laughs> asked me about, about chicken what? Chicken gray, or essentially B gray. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, uh, so yeah, a couple of things there. Um, DF is the one who gave this really cool idea of like, you know, DF came in to our, our Discord and said, hey, um, you know, can you support more PLUSD? And, and I said, yeah, when we can, but we can't put too much cell pressure on, on Gry, because especially if you support it, you know, say relatively uncapped or much higher caps, and you uh, support the floor price as the, as the price feed, then, you know, looped levered BLUSD could be profitable enough that it would just cause a lot of short-term cell pressure on Gry. And DF's point was, hey, what if you had a special version of this? And I, I see yarn in the chat of like, hey, a, you know, in my opinion, it gets even more attractive if if it's with a B protocol integration where you say, look, um, you can you can uh, mint Gry against BLUSD at a much higher cap if um it's if all the mints just go into the uh, gravitas stability pool so that it's guaranteed not to create cell pressure. And then in my view, that gets even more attractive if it's in the gravitas stability pool managed by the protocol. And so now you're having basically the BLUSD baked in yield from the liquidity stability pool plus an additional layer of baked in yield coming from the gravitas stability pool. And DF was like, um, hey, you could call it B-Gry. Um, uh, and... And I'm like, I love the idea, but we'll we'll reserve the B-Gry name for for a Gravita uh, chicken bond in the future. Um, nothing set in stone for sure, um, but we have been exploring the idea of you know when the Gravita Gov token goes live and we start distributing it, um, that uh, that be um, done with a um, with a Gravita chicken bond, um, and that chicken bond. You know, if we end up going that route, there are a few things that we likely do just slightly differently. Um, love the chicken bond um, uh, approach. Each chicken um, is unique, man. You don't need to yeah, say. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. So one of the things that we've considered, now th these are just kind of some thoughts at the moment, so don't take any of these as promises. But one of the things that we've considered is, hey, we want to, you know, if we start emitting our token, uh, it would be great for us to emit, emit it in a way that um, is, um, you know, highly efficient and co-beneficial to the protocol. And so one thing that we could potentially do is say, hey, um, when you open a chicken bond, you get a pending emission, and then your that emission becomes realized when you chicken in. Um, and uh, that would be one way to... It essentially would give an emission to the stability pool like Liquidity does, but only when participated in through our chicken bond. Um, so there's some, you could call it like chicken bond exclusivity on, um, on uh, stability pool um, emissions. Um, so that's one thought. And then um, something that we've also discussed is since we don't currently have um, an LQTY staking contract, um, an LQTY-like staking contract, and our, our goal right now is to use protocol revenues also to help the system grow in both um, size and stability. Um, the other possibility here is you say, okay, we take some protocol revenues and we put them into either the reserve bucket or the um, permanent bucket or a combination of both. And then that would also kind of give um, somewhat of a boost to the profitability of the chicken bond system. Um, so those are some thoughts that we've had. Really interested in feedback from the community. Um, and um, these things, just to reiterate, are not set in stone, but they are, you know, I like the chicken bond system a lot. And I think it would be really cool to, um, uh, to, to do some of that ourselves. And then it would be really cool to also have a chicken bond where, you know, the chicken in goes to a pool that includes LUSD. And so that's one of the ways that I think it could be cool to be, um, uh, co-beneficial to liquidity is is you know um, the liquidity it drives to our um, dex pool would also uh, you know bring some liquidity to LUSD as well. So a couple of thoughts there. Um, <laughs> oh, and, yeah, don't take any of that as promises, but this is uh, you know I've uh, <laughs> I I, um, I don't know I love the chicken bonds and have, have been thinking about this for a while and. By the way, to once again call out Yaren, um, and also I see Robert in the chat. 
um, both of those thoughts have um, somewhat been influenced by some opinions I've heard from both uh, of, of them about, you know, um, uh, the system, et cetera. And so um, these, you know, um, anyway, I just, yeah, I, I, you probably already know. I love the chicken bond system. I think it would be really cool for us to be able to have one ourselves. Um, and uh, those are some of the, some of the modifications that we would potentially make. Yeah, awesome. Thanks for all the pointers. I really like the idea of, of uh, maybe eventually at some point using the protocol fees to get a, I guess supply permanent bucket would be the most synergetic long-term way if you guys want to give, give back. But always, yeah, again, remember on chat, make sure you're not dumping your growth <laughs> to give back. I think it's it's not the best way to go neither. Um, so yeah, sure. uh, we have so many cool people around here. I'm so happy. I feel like I have all my, my uh, center's little help uh, making the, the magic of chicken bones possible <laughs> here with me tonight. So give, to give you a, a quick rundown, we have uh, uh, Yaron from B Protocol. We're going to get right to you if you're after in a bit, if you're available. So uh, B Protocol is a bit of, yeah, literally the little fairies of chicken bones, you know, the whole auto-compounded amplified yields. Well, that's a bit them, essentially, in terms of this requires infrastructure for harvest that performs consistently and, and without fault. And, and, and that's the protocol for the chicken bonds. So, yeah, I would love to get a chance to dive into that if, if you are around. And here we have uh, Dakota from Buddy that has been uh, a tremendous resource lately, uh, not just for the big USD, USD pool, uh, but also for all the uh, equity related part of Buddy. So, I don't know. If you are here, Dakota, who's around, essentially? <laughs> Can you all talk? Hey, what's up, guys? Oh, hi. Um, yeah. What's up? Um, <laughs> thank you for having me on, and congratulations. Yeah, it's really cool to kind of sit back and watch this victory lap happen a little bit. Yeah, the, all the the new attention on BLUSD is awesome, and you know, while we're at it, Rhett, congratulations on um, the successful launch so far of Gravita. Yeah, yeah, thanks um, yeah, so, I mean, I guess I'll just kind of explain. How, how do you want this to work? Yeah, yeah, way? please. Yeah, yeah, please. I wanted to kind of just spotlight how much of a resource you've been with Buddy. And I think we kind of did a, a speed run of Buddy governance lately with the uh, BLUSD and USD Gauge. Uh, of course, according to framework, we followed every single deadline. <laughs> and it's not implemented yet. <laughs> but, yeah, uh, and, and yeah. And you did a great job. <laughs> you really kind of keep us in line, you know, man. That that was that was a really good moment for me, actually. Um, so yeah, basically we're a liquidity engine built on top of Uni V3. And what we do is help liquidity providers have high profits by giving them incentives they deserve. Um, of course, while also helping protocols get a better bang for their buck with incentives. So um this is done by using or by having protocols bribe VLIT holders and directing emissions. Um, bank a similar like to the, the gauge process you'll see with curve or balancer. And um, we're turning uni v3 LP tokens into ERC 20s. So there's composability there that makes for great utility in its own right. Um, because this opens it, uh, optionality for something like collateral, right? Like with, with these ERC-20s. Um, where we come into this situation, um, of course, we were, we were, we've were we been working with you guys for a while now and, and got your governance token. Um, Not a governance token, man. Fee sharing. <laughs> fee, 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 fee sharing. <laughs> Fee sharing token, correct. Um, I'm sorry about that. So yeah, we, we, got that up and we, we got that up and then, like you said, we're about to have two more um, fully ready to go. So yeah, it, it really kind of comes down to Gravita kind of making this whole new push and excitement around BLUSD um, with their 80 plus percent LTV. So it's so cool. Thank, thank you, Rhett, for that. Um, yeah, and we're hoping that with sufficient liquidity um, from this TVL, we're going to be able to capture a, a large percentage of the volume over on Uniswap. 
Oh yeah, and I just realized, man, uh, today, so actually yesterday, the incentivization on so the goal on the LUSD USDC penny pool started. So I just shared it in the chat. Uh, right now you have 33% reward APR over 100 KTDL. You guys have fun. <laughs> Um, and yeah, uh, while you're here, I also wanted to, to uh, take the chance maybe to highlight uh, why Bernie was uh, so cool in that situation, I guess, because I realize it's, it's a bit clear for me, but not maybe for everyone. Um, so there was, a, 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 of course, we talked about like uh, the, uh, all, all happened pretty quick, but that's not, obviously not the only reason. Uh, the main thing that was uh, of interest here is that, uh, as Dakota was highlighting, Bernie is, is building liquidity on Uniswap V3. So it means you can concentrate exactly as you would do on Uniswap V3 and use all the parameters you would have on Uniswap V3. And, and that was very, very interesting for BLUSD uh, because check that first pool I shared in the chat, community call chat, that's a BLUSD pool. Um, and, and, and if you see that pool, you'll see the concentration uh, that is used. And it's a, a pretty uh, dense, as I call it, pool. Uh, I think it goes from 117 to 124. So over sets, seven cents of price, and that's it. Um, but, you know, um, we can afford essentially such a concentration uh, because there are, uh, the, the range of price of BLUSD is, is pretty limited, you know. So, for instance, BLUSD has a flow price, so it seems very unlikely that it would go under its flow price, or it might, but it would, would really not be for long because it would be armed. So you can put the minimum price uh, slightly above the flow price, for instance, and that would be uh, an efficient way to do it. So yeah, I don't know. I thought that was a, a, a cool thing to highlight with um, with Buddy, because uh, yeah, you you have like quite a few pegged assets that that use it, uh, but I guess they are more uh, you know, I guess regular pegged assets that don't have this premium situation, so they go with more uh, simple concentration. But uh, I thought it was pretty interesting to be able to uh, direct incentives to to a specific portion of the liquidity. It's it's. We actually took notice of you guys taking advantage of that. And that that's great. I mean, we feel like Uniswap's concentrated liquidity um, gives us a huge advantage, and yeah, we're excited to see what what you guys come up with next. Yeah, I mean, even on uh, LUSD USDC, we make uh, an interesting usage of it too, um, where it's a, it's a range that goes from one zero one five to slightly a slight premium um so uh, it's trying to essentially contain the range uh, of the premium of uh, LUSD a bit more <laughs> um all right well, thanks for 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 the insights of Buddy Dakota I guess we'll, we'll see you uh, we'll see more of you <laughs> uh, especially in the next few days as this uh, BLUSD pool um is ramping up uh, so I don't know, uh, Yaron, are you here? I would love to chat a bit about uh, the, the depths of the chicken bones, if I may. <laughs> oh, so I see you unmuted, but I don't think we can hear you. Maybe some mic issue? I'll, I'll give you a bit to, to test it out. Don't worry, when I give you a killer intro and then you can, you can work like nothing happened. <laughs> so yeah, as I was saying earlier, uh, B protocol is essentially the piece of infrastructure uh, used to harness, uh, to harvest uh, the, the the yield and compound them. So to be more specific, you know, there is a vault uh, of the chicken bonds that deposit LUSD into the stability pool, and so it's getting uh, LQTY rewards and ETH. And uh, B protocol vault is is an, uh, harvesting those rewards and using a pretty interesting mechanism uh, to settle them potentially. Um, it's to sorry to settle them back to LUSD, uh, but there is a bit of a, a cool arb there, and I thought it was like it's probably one of the. Um, least known corners of the chicken bond, if I may call it like that. Uh, so people are not super knowledgeable about it, but it's pretty cool. It's a way of essentially, if you own ETH, oh uh, no, sorry, the other way around. If you have a USD and you're looking for ETH or LQTY, if I'm not mistaken, you could harness this contract and get a more favorable price that you might have on the market. So I'm trying to find this. Uh, we have an article on this. Uh, and Yaron, I don't know, can you talk now? 
because I would need your help from this point on. <laughs> oh, all right. <laughs> uh, well, I will share with you at least the article, uh, but uh, I must admit uh, the, the way this works, you know, this is essentially matters of uh, infrastructure automation, MEV, uh, and then this is a bit above my technical understanding to serve you with accurate information, let's be honest. So, uh, yeah, I shared at least an article in the chat so you can have a, uh, uh, another deeper idea of what I was saying. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Welcome. Yeah, yeah, hey. I don't know, somehow my laptop doesn't really work. Uh, oh. Yes, yeah. So, so, so as you mentioned, the protocol actually uh, executes actually two roles there. Yeah, one is kind of gradual selling of the LKTY reward. Uh, but like, uh, actually what we say, are like our main contribution there, and not only to uh, chicken bones, but actually to the entire LUSD system, uh, is actually sort of a gradual and, you know, kind of more responsible rebalancing uh, of the stability pool itself uh, after liquidations. Uh, so, 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 yeah, yeah like uh, one byproduct that it kind of let you auto compound and auto harvest the LQTY rewards, uh, but something which is kind of even uh, more complicated on a technical level uh, is to automatically sell the ease after liquidations. Uh, and yeah, and this is something we do on top of liquidity stability pool, you know, like long before uh, the chicken bonds. Uh, and yeah, and since everyone are here, maybe, you know, I'll kind of also advertise uh, that, yeah, you can, you know, kind of auto harvest uh, the stability pool rewards even without uh, chicken bonds. And you can use, you know, pay protocol uh, on top, of course, of liquidity stability pool. <laughs> Uh, and you know, get your uh, standard LQTY, there you get to keep your LQTY, but also completely passive. Uh, yeah. So this is kind of something we did, you know, like I think over a year uh, before uh, Chicken Bomb came to life. And in Chicken Bomb, we kind of adjusted it and expanded it to yeah, gradually uh, sell the LQTY part. We are basically, uh, we sort of look at the TWOP, a price of LKTY and, you know, given that liquidity is pretty uh, medium for LKTY, you know, we take a very long TWOP range to avoid manipulations. Uh, mm -hmm. And, you know, in practice, it only gets rebalanced when there is some, you know, arbitrage that justify the gas costs uh, of everything. Uh, and yeah, and then like under the hood, we also provided some reference arbitrage bot that actually yeah, yeah, actually, I think it starts from ETH, then go to LQTY, then to yeah, LUSD, then sell it back to ETH and complete the arbitrage. I think with like with Curve and Uniswap, like at least two or three hops there. So yeah, this is what we do. Yeah, you're right. Thanks for, for all the perspective. I was so focused on chicken bonds. Kind of almost forgot about the OG B protocol vault. That's an important par part of infrastructure, uh, especially because uh, what's interesting about it is since it compounds everything back into a USD, it essentially means it's, um, I want to say, a stability pool maxi, you know, because you give that thing ease and its target would be, okay, how can I set all this back to a USD uh, essentially as quick as possible without also realizing losses, of course, as Jaron was expliciting. And you can understand it's pretty uh, hard to make all those computations essentially uh, on, on what to do with those ease and when to settle them at the most favorable price. So that's that's pretty cool, uh, pretty cool to have. Uh, but yeah, so essentially the OG uh, B protocol vault before chicken bonds uh, is kind of helping making sure um, the stability pool is uh, always supplied. So I'm not sure. Do, can you see the TV? Yeah, I think on, on your website you 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 uh, you display it. I just put it in the chat. Let me check quickly for reference. Uh, but in, in this uh, this world itself, I don't think it's that much anymore. Most of it kind of went through chicken bones now. Uh, but there are still some people. I think it's almost half. Like, you know, like we have like around 10 million uh, in the stability pool directly. And then mm. like another 15 or so from the chicken bones. Yeah, it makes sense. 
it's it's uh, also less layers essentially than chicken bones. So I guess some uh, some USD holders might be happy to uh, to harness B protocol, but kind of not comfortable with the extra step. Um, yeah, I remember too. You had uh, I think you shared some content on this art bot uh, somewhere. Maybe yeah, let, let me. I'll try to find it. But if you have it in mind, I think that was you who wrote it. Yeah, or that might be, or maybe I'm mistaken. Uh, let me check. I think it was on your medium, medium B protocol, chicken bone arbitrage, or something like that. Yeah, it is in our medium. Oh yes, yeah, so I found it. I found it. Arbitraging chicken bone stability pool for fun and profit. Here you go. Uh, for uh, those who would like to deep dive, I think, if I recall correctly, this article is a bit more uh, uh, generous in details of, of what you can do. Can I give you some ideas, tips and tricks even? <laughs> so all you need to, to, to try your luck at it. Awesome, Yaron. Thanks, uh, thanks for being around. Are you guys working on, uh, on anything cool you can, you can give us a sneak peek on? And yeah, uh, actually, B protocol is kind of pivoting into a more uh, on-chain risk management, uh, you know, uh, product. Uh, we have, you know, like uh, as a service, we have like the risk DAO, and we, we actually, you know, did like deep dive analysis back then on chicken bones. So we also took part there. Uh, but in B protocol, what we aim for is to kind of set standards to automated uh, risk management. Uh, which is, you know, kind of less relevant uh, to uh, liquidity, given everything is immutable. Uh, but we are kind of aiming to put all the risk management to be fully on-chain and actually be done by smart contracts, uh, which is, you know, like kind of to take on the government. So you know, at least the vision, take away, you know, like all the governance process from the risk management and, you know, setting uh, MCRs, etc. Uh, automatically with some on-chain algorithms. Ah, that sounds pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, maybe not for liquidity, but definitely useful for DeFi. Uh, and yeah, yeah, I just, uh, while we add it, uh, if you want to drop a line on what RiskDAO is doing, because uh, I think it's pretty cool. So I remember your um, bad debt dashboard I'm sharing quite often <laughs> to kind of help people understand, you know, when they ask things about some questions about liquidity protocols design. And what are you guys not doing like this protocol? I'm like, well, look, they're topping the bad debt dashboard. Maybe that's a reason, you know? <laughs> so, yeah. Um, but yeah, I imagine it's a bit wider than that. So uh, feel free if you want to spotlight a bit what yeah, you guys yeah. are working on on the Riz too. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like the Rizdao, yeah, we have like the bed that dashboard, which is kind of, you know, like the more of the community service uh, that we give. Uh, but like RiskDAO is also kind of a bunch of researchers who are actually giving paid uh, services, uh, mostly to many markets and some stable coins. Uh, so around, uh, you know, like ongoing monitoring uh, of risk parameters such as LTV, collateral ratios, etc. Uh, but, but also doing, you know, sort of uh, pre-launch analysis uh, for protocols. Uh, actually, we have a lot of work, you know, around the liquidity forks. <laughs> we, we, ah, we yes. Yeah, I saw that. And, and, yeah. And, uh, and specifically for uh, chicken bonds, uh, so, you know, uh, liquidity foundation or whatever, chicken bonds, whatever. So, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, <laughs> published uh, some research bounty uh, about, you know, kind of estimating the fair value uh, of BLUSD. Uh, I think, by the way, after our work, you know, the mechanism did change a bit, uh, so we cannot produce yes. our results as is, uh, but we did some game theory analysis around it, and, you know, we, we found... Yeah, yeah. You, know, you guys were with the chat. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Overlooked that, sorry, but for, for the context for everybody, there was a, a hundred thousand liquidity bounty on a, quite a serious, um, not sure how to qualify this, my brain is too tiny, but it's a mass problem at least, <laughs> as to essentially how to evaluate, uh, propose a formula to evaluate a potential fair price for BLUSD. And keep in mind that this is before uh, chicken bonds even existed, so just from the papers. So really something for, <laughs> for people who can do some quite quite serious modelization. Uh, and yeah, we style, uh, so we are, but not only you, if I, if I, I don't know, I'm not exactly uh, directly involved with that, but 
you guys provided, uh, I think I answer that was considered uh, uh, almost uh, exhaustive, but there was like one of the three conditions that wasn't fulfilled to, to, to get exactly to the result we wanted, but that was still like a nice step in the direction. And yeah, it definitely helped. It, it, yeah, it was also, you know, something like it's very cool to work on. And yeah, like eventually we didn't get the full bounty, but, you know, we did get a bounty and they published the research paper. And yeah, very nice work back then. Uh, what's Sorry going on? in here. Oh, hi, Robert. Uh, hey, hello. Yeah, I just wanted to, like, expand on that. I mean, you're on what, like, I mean, you have also been following um, the success or at least, at least like, the, the history of Chicken Bond so far. Like, what do you think? Uh, has your kind of pricing prediction um, come true? Like, was it um, uh, yeah, no, in reality? No, no, so actually we did try to follow it, but, but you know, like, uh, as far as I remember, the mechanism, you know, did change a bit, you know, after we published the paper. Uh, specifically, uh, there are now en sort of entrance fee, right? Like flat entrance fee. Uh, that were well, not in our original analysis. And it oh, the liquidity incentivization, yeah, wasn't part of your analysis, I think. That may be that, right? Yeah, which, which, which like kind of, you know, like ch ch or change at least the theoretical framework, you know, a lot. Uh, no, but overall, yeah, we, we, do, we do try to, you know, kind of follow it and, you know, make conclusions. It's, it's also a bit, you know, kind of noisy data because of the, you know, like er early days of chicken bones. Uh, yeah, and the Sifu saga. Uh, uh, but yeah, no, but, but I think like uh, overall, yeah, it, it's hard to say, you know, especially because of the entrance fees right now. It's kind of changed the picture. Yeah, yeah thanks, Jerome. So how is it going, Robert? Want to <laughs> wanna give us a, so a, little, uh, a little thoughts on... On how this is going, like were you anticipating a, a kind of a resurgence, and and yeah, what do you think of this new arc? It's kind of a topic I want to discuss next. Of uh, what I call the chad of all collateral that is BLUSD, and I think this is a bit like the recent realization. Yeah, I think that's a really interesting evolution now because. I mean, it was always clear from the outset that chicken bonds basically relies on, on two user groups to function, like at least two user groups, one of them being the bonders, but also those who just buy and hold um, the BLUSD token, or they can also just uh, buy it and then become an LP, but we need both sides. And uh, it turned out eventually that like the bonding side was more attractive than the let's say BLUSD holding side. And that was also due to a lack of use cases other than just uh, becoming an LP. But now thanks to Gravitas um, novel like uh, pools, uh, I think with BLUSD being accepted as collateral there, we'll see, we, I hope to see like a kind of the self-fulfilling effect where once uh, there is more demand for BLUSD and the price goes up again, this would also lead to more bonding activity. And then the bonding activity kind of, again, leads to more like higher yield amplification, which should also help the, the BLUSD token in the end. So it kind of, it has the potential to restart the flywheel. So that's really interesting and really exciting now to see how this will will evolve. And uh, and yeah, like it's an uh, exciting times ahead of us. Oh yeah, I like where this thought is heading. I actually have one this this as one of my scenarios. I'm not gonna give you the odds, but I call it the chicken wars. <laughs> and the idea is, uh, what if uh, following the success uh, of BLUSD as a collateral on, on Gravita and you know increased liquidity and so on, essentially other protocols <laughs> start to harness BLUSD as collateral to and and you know. Essentially, there would be a bit of a race to uh, accumulate BLUSD. I mean, that's a scenario that's probably optimistic, but can I give you a direction that, that could be uh, uh, envisioned, yeah? Oh, a decade, asking the million dollar question again. You want to try your luck at it, Robert? Just reading it for the chat, uh, uh, for, for the people just listening. Uh, know that BLUSD has some pools out there. Is there any type of equation that you could calculate whether it's better to bond or to buy the premium and which would which one would break even first? 
Yeah, I mean, that's a, not an easy question because it all depends on the future. I mean, we have those, you know, APR or APY estimations shown on, on, the, on the UI, like at least on, on the front ends that, that run our UI uh, launch kit, um, which basically give you like an overview of uh, like the APR of each of those, of bonding and the BLUSD token, like just holding it. Um, I mean, giving you an equation is a bit hard because, you know, the thing is um, for the BLUSD, now we have seen that the, the APR numbers have stabilized at like a bit short of 1.5x. Now I think it's around 1.4, but like, it seems that now the BLUSD yield has been pretty stable and still like significantly above like the, the normal, the regular stability pool yield. On the other hand, for bonding, I mean, the APR and also the break-even times and the optimal rebounding times are very heavily dependent on the current BLUSD price, which is, of course, fluctuating more than, or it is at least fluctuating. So it means that for, yeah, for bonding, I think there is more unpredictability involved when it comes to, yeah, the, the return on investments. But, but after all, you have the principal protection, so you can chicken out. So you have more uncertainty regarding the potential gains, but you have also this um, added benefit of, of being able to chicken out whenever you want. Whereas with the BLUSD token, you have uh, a bit more clarity, I guess, or predictability, at least somewhat more on the yield side, but you have uh, maybe a bit more risk on the on the downside. I mean, it's... Uh, like you can of course calculate how much it may um, drop by looking at the redemption price or the price floor, but uh, yeah, there is still this like band between the current price and the and the redemption price where it can fluctuate. So it's really hard to give you an answer because it's also like yeah, not it's it's not like comparing apples and oranges. It's or it is comparing apples and oranges in a way, bonding and BLUSD holding. <laughs> Yeah, the, the risk model is it, it is different, uh, and and uh, you don't have the same guarantees. And especially when you bond, you do have a guarantee to your downside uh, because you have your principal protection. When you buy BLUSD, I guess you have a guarantee to your downside that is the BLUSD floor price. So, uh, for instance, if you manage to buy BLUSD very close to the floor price, that's probably not such a not such a bad uh, deal to take. Uh, and you know that's pretty interesting because. Three weeks ago, that was pretty much a standard state of the pool. You would find LUB USD close to full price uh, on the markets, on, on the curve pools. Um, but now, with uh, renewed interest, thanks to uh, Gravita, um, the price is pretty much like five cents above the pool price. So it's not a, a marginal uh, 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 kind of premium over the floor price that you have here, and this is why uh, the, the 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 system is is a bit relaunching. Yeah, I'm kind of glad and all that happened because there are quite a few uh, believers, chicken believers, that either you know kind of held to the position, had the sanity of like, all right, I'm not making that crazy year right now, but I'm just I'm well positioned. I'll stay there because I know in in a few months it would be a good spot to have, or even some people even chatter that are uh, a bit more uh, agile. I guess in the money and kind of just went elsewhere probably I don't know chased eons on Arbitrum or Optimism with LUSD and came back to uh, uh, to be a USD pretty recently over the last few weeks uh, with an opportunistic entry so I'm kind of glad those two populations got got uh, got their, um, their, their, their their profits because they pretty much deserve it yeah so uh, we do have uh, Nicola from DeFi Saver if you're still around uh, I would love to get you uh, on the air too, if you have a working microphone. Oh, maybe. Oh, yes. Uh, yep. I hope you can hi. hear me. We can hi, hear you loud and clear. Yeah. Um, hi, everyone. Um, I'm one of the Nicholas from the DeFi Saver team. <laughs> I and, love it when um, you say that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's kind of a not not a, in, only internal meme uh, as of now. Yeah. It's. A lot of people know about that. Um, so yeah, we at DeFi Saver um, basically support, try to, to support uh, the Chicken Born protocol from the very beginning. And uh, 
during that time we launched some also some uh, automation features for the chicken bonders and we currently have a uh, the feature for auto rebonding and the one that basically can save your trove from liquidation by canceling either canceling or um, chicken inning uh, your bond and getting out that uh, capital to repay the the trove debt i can uh, share the the link yeah yeah i'll add in the, the chat dashboard. don't worry yeah yeah. Don't, uh, yeah, because I don't know why we did that in a channel where we can't share screen. It's a bit annoying. But <laughs> yes, we'll share here so everybody has it. Um, but yeah, uh, what you guys have been doing at, at DFS is is really cool. Uh, ah, all right, I might get in into trouble for saying that, <laughs> but it's changed it uh, a bit like any a bit is the chat of all crash or uh, DeFi saver is a bit of the chat of front ends in the sense that feature wise it goes uh, a bit further uh, what you would find uh, or elsewhere thanks to those uh, this infrastructure they have and the automation it can it can allow uh, what's really cool for uh, uh, chicken bonds and, and liquidity it's because here again it's a story uh, it's a bit like the protocol with Yara earlier <laughs> so this time I'm, I'm gonna be the one remembering it uh, uh, is uh, the story goes way before chicken bonds with DeFi saver uh, they've been operating a, a, a liquidity front end since a while since uh, yeah each year and um, and the way uh, automation there already in order to you know automatically repay that for instance and avoid being liquidated uh, but the really cool thing is uh, as integrated chicken bonds so initially it started really with you know optimization features i want to say really like contained to the chicken bonds so like uh, this this bond uh, uh, product that essentially you know does uh, the work of claiming the usd swapping back to usd and creating a new bond for, for you when profitable automatically but now where it gets the most exciting to me is when what happened like what uh, around december i think which is when uh, you guys connected everything back to the liquidity integration down to the point that now you can have the full autopilot essentially. So you put some ease on device saver in uh, an automated trove, managed trove, and you meet your LUSD and then they go into a chicken bounce. So all of that you do, uh, let's say manually the first time, but then you can set up automations on top of that to like, Take your holidays and forget about it. Essentially, if you if you feel game, and and those are that you put an automation. I want to say the optimistic auto automation, which is the rebounder. So like, hey, if I'm making my yield and and my bonds become mature enough that you can chicken it in for profit, we will do that and, and make another bond. And then uh, a kind of protector one at the same time too, which goes the other way around. Oh, if this price is really like trashing today and, and I'm starting to get into like below this collateralization ratio that I don't, I am not comfortable with, well, you can cancel that bond and use the LUSD to uh, pay back the debt. So yeah. Uh, I don't know if you want to share more on that full, uh, full automation. That's why it was pretty cool um, as, as a, a suite of product to kind of be almost full passive on chicken bonds. Yeah, I, I will uh, share the link to the blog post with, with all the details. So not the background here, but uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's cool. So everybody knows. And yeah, I kind of like the way you guys went with um, uh, uh, um, monetizing, essentially. So to be explicit, uh, there is no uh, there is no fee on, on, on uh, um, DeFi saver per se. They don't take a kickback rate. But what they do is that when the protocol performs a swap for you, there is a 30 BPS fee for the service provided. And yeah, so that's exactly. actually pretty yeah. cool. Yeah, yeah, like, we, yeah. We, the, the kickback rate is 100%, meaning that all the yield from the stability pool goes to the to the stability pool uh, provider, uh, but we have some service fees on more advanced and automated actions, basically. But for the basic actions, there is the, the service is completely free. Yeah. 
Yeah, and that's pretty cool because it also means, you know, you can set up the automation and if it doesn't trigger, you won't pay a fee either. So you really just pay for what you, you, you actually use. So I think it's quite fair in that sense. So yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Thanks. Uh, so, yeah, I, I saw you guys in the chat. Of course, Red is not meeting his shot of securing the chat of the front end. Smart move made. Do uh, you have anything, anything else in plan at the TFS team you could, you could share a bit about? Uh, no, maybe just one more information for uh, regarding uh, liquidity. We have recently uh, launched the newest um, type of automation for the liquidity users. Basically, we, we shipped the automated leverage management um, something called the boost and repay on uh, on DeFi Saver for liquidity users. Um, basically, you can manage your collateral ratio in one transaction, and now it can be even automated transaction. Really cool. Uh, yeah, I've been uh, using you guys for my uh, my absolute digit trove, as they call it. <laughs> it's literally just the only thing this trove does is max leverage is once in a while and then goes back to sleep uh, and, and yeah try to monitor the position within certain range too so uh, i'm pretty happy to have dfs to, to kind of keep my back on this one. Oh yeah uh one more thing uh, i almost forgot uh we have just added the beep protocol actually into our smart smart savings dashboard um meaning you can now supply the lusd into the stability pool via b protocol through the, um, the DeFi server. Oh, amazing. It's like the so, family uh, yeah. coming together. <laughs> yeah. Aaron was just telling us exactly. about yeah. the world. <laughs> and I think uh, it will not be technically uh, a difficult next step uh, will be to to uh, enable auto payback from the B protocol to, to Trove uh, in case, let's say, the trigger can be uh, do the auto pay but withdraw from the stability pool if my collateral ratio reaches, I don't know, uh, 150% or something like that. I think we'll also work on that in upcoming weeks too. Oh man, you're gonna you're gonna be doing a public service here <laughs> because I do uh, when I yeah I'm a weird guy I guess but I do like to watch the truth that are of liberty. <laughs> they don't judge me and 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 one of the biggest tragedy is uh, over leveraging to supply the stability pool only to get liquidated. <laughs> exactly. So the yeah, US I mean, will literally like solve a pain point because you know it's like people want to supply stability pool and it's I don't know I think it kind of twists up the grid logic of people because you know you kind of the, the 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 worst the market is the more you want to be in stability pool but the worst the market is the least you should leverage to get into stability pool <laughs> and I guess those two factors together sometimes they trigger something really weird to people like you see like big leverage right after a dump to supply stability pool and what happened is another dump after that and the guy gets liquidated <laughs> so yeah you would so save those guys essentially with such a product yeah and to be honest it, it uh, pretty much makes sense for us to develop uh, to work on further features for liquidity because we have re recently seen a very high activity from the from the liquidity users at DeFi server I've shared the link we have uh, also um, shift our public uh, app dashboard so you can filter it. Hey, you have uh, the analytics uh, website that is yeah, pretty yeah, cool, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah you can, can look at the basically see what's, what's happening. Yeah, you can see there what's happening on the DeFi server and uh, what um, specific uh, liquid users are and how are they using liquid at DeFi server and managing their uh, their throws. Uh, uh, yeah, where where is your website, your stats website? Because like, uh, it's like always the same story with it. Like, okay, a client a user feedback is, I remember it exists, but every time I'm looking for it, I can't find it through your website. Like, is it linked somewhere on the website? Yeah, okay. Oh, you got it in the chat. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm gonna, uh, uh, to be honest, I'm not sure if it's linked on the website. I must. Uh, that's a good point, actually. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's not. Yeah. That yeah. might be why yeah. I get lost every time. Okay. So yeah, thanks for for whoever shared. But yeah, it's pretty cool. You can uh, you can really look at the different position, can explore uh, the various events. 
and see also uh, the, the the automation at play for DeFi Saver, uh, which is really cool. So like right now you see you have 13 subscribers only of, of automation for DeFi Saver, but still with uh, more than $4 million uh, for liquidity and uh, management, let's say, <laughs> and about uh, 500000 for chicken bonds with 14 subscribers. Subscribers being uh, wallets using the, the automation service. Yeah, I mean, they come and go. Basically, if you, for example, turn on the, the stop loss feature, if it gets triggered, your throw gets closed and the automation you know, uh, goes off. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that makes sense. You guys only once. <clears throat> All right. Um, well, I don't know. It's been quite right. I don't know if you guys want to keep going. I, I could. I could keep going with the chicken bone. It's a bit of my my patient of mine, I guess. Um, favorite protocol to get to paint it. Um, but yeah. Uh, let me think if I had all the things. Uh, too bad. Uh, I was trying to get Luchador on tonight, but he ran into a, a last-minute issue. I would have been really happy to, to share a bit with, uh, with him because he's uh, um, the artist of for, uh, Chicken Bones NFT. So that's also a bit of the, the, the fun part of Chicken Bones, I guess. I mean, the DeFi part is fun too, but uh, I find this component particularly uh, interesting for, for a DeFi protocol. Uh, Yep. So I don't know. I guess if you guys uh, in the chat you have questions or uh, you, you wanna um, bring forward uh, last few topics to to address. Um, yeah, I guess for the rest, you know, just to give you the quick recap of what we are looking at. Um, so the um, Bernie BLUSD uh, Gauge uh, proposal just cleared through governance day in terms of the snapshot voting uh, so that means it will take um, roughly until the next Thursday for it if if uh, for the incentivization to start on that poll that I just put back in the chat again uh, you well, well Bernie uh, we mentioned it earlier but you'll find there also an LUSD USDC poll that recently started uh, and is pretty uh, attractive <laughs> uh, in, 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 in uh, how it works. Um, and yeah, for the next step, if you're interested in BLUSD as collateral, uh, you might want to follow around Gravita to know when is the next cap raise. Because <laughs> it turned, uh, as the rate was saying, like uh, 30 minutes ago, uh, the last one was filled in 10 minutes <laughs> or something like that. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> it seems quite competitive. Uh, so make sure you have uh, all the odds in your favor if you want to play that game. Um, and what else? Uh, let me think about any, any big stuff for chicken bones. I don't think so in, 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 in the near future. Um, we do have a bigger plan for chicken bones. Uh, I guess you all uh, kind of heard about it. And yeah, I could. you've you stayed with me this far, so I could figure this out far. Uh, would be our little, our little secret and just, uh, what, 15 of us. Um, so the chicken bones, uh, the vision is to generalize the protocol since the get-go. Uh, obviously, uh, it is a challenging mission, as you can imagine, uh, because um, refer back to my intro, but essentially chicken bones are built very, with very high synergy to the underlying protocol. So think about that uh, LUSD chicken bonds, they use the liquidity stability pool. So they are literally LUSD specific. You cannot replicate them as such on any other coin, uh, except maybe some coin with a stability pool like Gry or something like that. But you see what I mean. So the vision with generous chicken bonds was always to find uh, a kind of uh, abstraction layer, a way to uh, um, generalize that design to be able to stomach any tokens. Um, as we started exploring that route, uh, we realized it was uh, quite a, a, a beefy adventure, uh, you know, especially bigger than uh, LUSD chicken bonds that were already quite the development by themselves. Uh, and yeah, without uh, stealing the cake of the rest of the team, uh, the team has other projects, not just generalized chicken bonds, if you, if you could uh, think about it. And so... Um, and so what, what is happening with the chicken bones generalized version is 
they do are happening, uh, but they will be essentially carried away by uh, uh, a separate team uh, with a form of synergy and support with liquidity, of course. Uh, and so, yeah, uh, this is also part of the process that uh, kind of delayed things a little bit. Uh, compared to, I guess, those who were following us in, in September regarding our timeline on generalization, you might be a bit uh, disappointed. And so I wanted to give you that context. But I think it's really for the best because, uh, yeah, um, generalized CB is essentially a, a big freaking beast, all right? A very uh, uh, sizable uh, piece of logic, to put it simply. Um, and, and yeah, I guess it's best to have like a, a full team dedicated to it, to be on it uh, 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 with all its attention. Uh, and especially, uh, I guess all of this will make sense for you a few years from now when you know what's brewing inside, but I cannot tell. <laughs> but yes, uh, here's how it goes, I'm trying to navigate uh, the alpha lines without getting uh, triggering the alpha police on any side. So yeah, uh, give you one more minute if you guys have last questions uh, uh, in the chat, or you can you can pick the mic. I think anyone should be able to pick the mic if you want to, or else I'll read you. Oh, um, so uh, yeah, generalized chicken bonds. When we mentioned that, it's it's broader than even stablecoin. It's literally uh, any ERC twenty token. <laughs> as simple as that. Decade, we were asking uh, if it's just for all the stables. Uh, no, so that's the thing is, uh, yeah, it's it's literally like any token, and so that requires more infrastructure to make it happen. Uh, but that's also uh, what's really interesting about it. Essentially, um, to give you a bit more context, the thought process, obviously, you, you presented with uh, like the mature result, I want to say now, uh, but it went more like, oh, LUSD chicken bonds are interesting. Okay, let's try to adapt the LUSD chicken bonds to another thing. And then, oh, we could also adapt it to another thing, and then to another thing. And then we realized we were building a brand new protocol pretty much every token we're adapting the LUSDCB to, leading to the point of, all right, let's try to maybe think about, maybe there is an approach where we, we spend a lot of time building a piece of infrastructure, but then that piece of infrastructure enables us to onboard any token arbitrarily. Uh, and uh, uh, yeah, that's pretty much the route that uh, the, the GCB project has been through. So yeah, no one is late for the chicken party. Uh, I guess this is just starting. Uh, chickens are in for the long count. <laughs> and yeah, I'm really glad to see uh, the renewed interest for the chicken bonds. Uh, to me, it was like one of the coolest uh, release in DeFi of the last year. And so, um, you know, sometime uh, great artists take a while to be recognized. And maybe that's a bit of the same pattern at play here. Uh, but I do think that, you know, there's one thing sure is, uh, uh, <laughs> okay, it's going to be so French, but it's all right. I, I'll, I'll stand with it. Uh, I really think that what uh, Liquidity Team has shipped so far is really like fine wine. And, and over the years, it's only getting better. Uh, uh, and, and I think that's really like quite unique uh, compared to what we see in DeFi that could uh, be of, of very short uh, lifespan. So yeah, excited for uh, seeing all, all chicken <laughs> growing up, and and uh, yeah, let's uh, let's see where uh, where we'll go once he, he spreads his wings. Thank you all for joining today, uh, and, and yeah, looking forward to have you on for another call. Um, do we have another community call planned already, Sam? Uh, I'm not sure. Not yet, but we can do one maybe two weeks from now. We can put it on the calendar. Awesome. So yeah, roughly two weeks from now. And yeah, we'll probably, oh yes, if you're around, uh, we'll be at East Belgrade. Uh, we shared about it on Twitter. But so if you're around East Belgrade uh, early June, uh, feel free to hit us up. 
uh, there we should have a booth, uh, pretty cool. And and for uh, the other coming up event, we have a stablecoin summit, ECC, and Oracle summit, all in July, and all with real pieces of liquidity team member in there. <laughs> so yeah, uh, if you are on those events, uh, definitely feel free to uh, hit up us on uh, hit us up on Discord, Twitter, whatever. Uh, one always always quite keen to to meet users and, and yeah, decentralization curious about. All right, you all have a good night and and yeah, special thanks for to Red Dakota uh, Nicola and Yaron for joining. That was really cool to get all those perspectives. And and you, Robert, too. It was cool you, you could uh, you could give us uh, a few lights too. We really appreciate it. It was a pleasure. Thanks all for joining. And thanks, Breeze, for guiding us through this evening. My pleasure, really. All right, then. You all have good drinks, nights, whatsoever. Enjoy and have fun chickening in.